Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for coming. So it's, um, in today's session, I'm going to talk about uh, the, um, um, creating a cloud native microservices about uh, programming models for you to choose from. So basically, you can see from the title and from the first slide, I'm going to do a comparison uh, about uh, two very popular framework, uh, B2 Micro Profile and uh, Spring. Uh, I'm Emily Jiang, I work for IBM, and I work on open source projects, uh, Micro Profile and uh, Open Liberty. Uh, let's do a show of hands. How many of you have heard of Micro Profile? Okay, most of them. How many of you have uh, uh, are using are using Micro Profile? No. Uh, how many of you have heard of Spring? <laughs> oh, all of you, nearly. Uh, and uh, how many of you are using Spring? Okay. Okay, that's very good. So this is the aim, uh, like uh, my mission for today's talk, and hopefully, like uh, with your Spring background, you can know Micro Profile straight away after today's talk. Okay. Uh, let me know if you think otherwise. Like uh, I have said, um, so it's, um, so for the ones you have not heard of Micro Profile, Micro Profile is an open source um, community. Basically, it's for the companies that come together to evolve a programming model for doing cloud native uh, microservices. Uh, and uh, it was established uh, three years ago by IBM, Red Hat, Piara, Tommy Tribe, London Java community, and some other individuals. By the way, we welcome all of you, each one of you, to join us and contribute. It's a completely open, like uh, uh, open source. Like everyone is welcome. It's uh, completely community driven. We have a very lightweight process, and we do three times release, uh, three releases per year. And the spec and TCK and um, API uh, are, are uh, open. So basically, the, you can see the API and the TCK in the Maven Central. So this is a big uh, kind of roadmap for the micro profile. As you can see, it started three years ago. Now it's uh, like actually this week we are going to do a micro profile 3.1 release. And uh, one of the implementations is called Open Liberty. That's the uh, uh, project I'm working on. Is uh, also is open source. Uh, you are welcome to contribute as well by raising any issues or fix uh, propose any PRs and etc. And uh, this is, uh, I listed all the um, uh, kind of releases. This is all the um, open liberty features. So once you know open liberty, this, this looks uh, quite straightforward. So give you a quick uh, kind of overview. The, I mean, uh, before the current Micro Profile 3.0 release, it has like uh, uh, this uh, four, uh, this is the eight specifications. And it's based on the Java EE specification, CDI, uh, JAXRS, JSONB, and JSONP. And there's uh, also standalone releases like context propagation. This is about if you know Java EE, you know all the when you uh, start doing a synchronized uh, like uh, programming, you see all the thread you get uh, if it's from a fork join pool. It doesn't have any uh, any context associated with. So this is the context propagation that basically can help you to propagate uh, CDI context, uh, security context, or even transaction context. And this is micro profile is also goes to reactive. Now it's kind of everybody, uh, so many people are rushed to reactive, uh, and the reactive is going to be a very very popular um, like uh, in the next few years. Uh, is quite popular even uh, nowadays as well. So we have uh, two uh, standalone releases. It's not part of this um, umbrella release as yet because we are discussing whether we want to add all of them into this uh, big uh, uh, bucket altogether or break up the bucket into individual bucket, buckets. If you have any ideas, at the moment we are discussing this growing 
pain, and you can welcome to join to share your ideas. Whether you prefer everything is in the one uh, like a platform release, or we have individual uh, profiles. So it's a, once you do micro profile, and the, there's a, so many like uh, runtimes for you to choose from. All this is all the micro profile implementations. Uh, like in IBM, we have Open Liberty, Web Sphere Liberty, and um, to, uh, Red Hat has Small Ray and Sontail. Payara uh, has a Payara macro. Uh, Payara, have uh, any of you know Payara? No Payara? Good. It's a kind of product. Uh, production version of Glassfish, so you can get a uh, survey. And this is directly from my uh, Oracle Helden. Okay, now I got uh, like uh, you probably now know about micro profile now, right? This, this is a big comparison. So when you do the cloud native uh, applications, you will do the uh, REST, is a, this is uh, like uh, some uh, uh, very useful. Uh, specifications for to help you to do the rest and the reactive and also the kind of uh, how to handle hundreds of services you have some qualities of services config for tolerance secure microservices and also is uh, once you do cloud native uh, um, development you want to like uh, monitor the application and uh, also it's the kind of trace the application you have all this so basically uh, in each category, you have uh, some uh, support from Spring, and also you have uh, alternative support from Micro Profile. So then, in the next um, uh, like um, uh, twenty minutes, also I will go through uh, each uh, in return. Like first, first of all, how can you get started? How can you create a Micro Profile um, uh, uh, microservices, or how can you create a Spring uh, microservice? How many of you, uh, when you do the Spring development, do you use the Spring uh, initiator? Do, do you all use that? Oh, that's good. And alternatively, we have this. I recommend you to uh, check it out to start the microprofile.io. So the big difference between these two is uh, here you can have a lot of runtime to, for you to choose from. Here you got a different versions. Here, in Spring, you just have one Spring Boot, right? Here, you can choose, uh, if it's one app server support, uh, like a micro profile 3.0, maybe you, there's multiple ones to, to choose from. So you can choose uh, whatever like um, uh, you like, whichever you like. So uh, hopefully, toward the end, I will do a quick um, demo as well to show you a little bit more about micro profile. I'm not going to do any demo about Spring since you all know Spring pretty well. Okay, let's go through each um, category in return. Let's uh, take a further look. So it's, um, you know it's when you do the um, microservices, it's uh, one of the very uh, microservices at the end of the day, you just do like, uh, do a, re a post request and get response back. It's a very popular, like uh, this uh, very popular mechanism a mechanism for achieving that kind of microservices is to use a REST, right? So it's for doing a REST, basically is that you post a request and get a response, or you may be post a, a command and uh, uh, make some action to the database. So, so for REST, for Spring, like uh, you do a Spring, bo a Spring Boot application, and then you create a, like a REST controller. In this kind of, and then this is a kind of you do this URL uh, mapping. In micro profile, we use JAX.js. So alternatively to like a Spring Boot application, you create a uh, like a directly class extends application with annotation application path, and then you create alternative like uh, JAX.js resources. You just annotate other path. And then it's the kind of you can have get operation, have post operation, or have patch, and etc. Right. So it's a, this is the rest. So again, it's just a, another way to show the a micro profile. So the other thing is that, okay, with rest actually you can create a microservice. You can post a, re, a request and get a response. However, when you do microservices, you also you need to make sure like uh, how can you 
create like a loosely coupled microservices. So basically, you want to handle the dependency injection. In Spring, right, you use auto wired to directly inject instances to your uh, classes. Like, uh, remember, like once you use this, you don't directly call the constructor yourself. So. Uh, similarly, in micro profile, you use CDI, so you directly use at inject. So at inject, like uh, also I say, is from CDI. Actually, this one from uh, injection uh, spec is called a JSR three thirty. Spring also support at inject. Uh, do you use at inject in Spring? Nobody. Oh, few. Okay, but uh, uh, who else use auto uh, auto wired? Okay, yeah, yeah. I think the one I mentioned auto wired people is oh, oh, I know. But um, yeah, at inject also available in Spring. Uh, Spring also support JSR three thirty. So in micro profile, we use a CDI. CDI support uh, like a JSR three thirty. So this is a CDI. Um, the other thing is like uh, uh, when you have uh, like a micro service, you want uh, like. Um, and uh, document it, right? What this uh, microservice is capable of, and what's the, uh, what's the endpoint this uh, this operation bound to, and etc. So in Spring, uh, you use like you do a, a define a dependency, and then define a REST, and write your test, and then call uh, various uh, uh, operations to do the document. In Micro Profile, we use a Swagger. How many of you, uh, we, we have a micro profile open API is directly based on Swagger. How many of you know Swagger? Okay, that's cool. So once you know Swagger, you can see this, right? That's the kind of quite familiar with. So in micro profile auto box, you will get, uh, uh, you will get a localhost 9080 uh, slash open API. And uh, when, you, when you poke it, uh, you will get this response. And in Open Liberty, we have the Swagger UI integrated as well. So you can do a slash UI, you can list all the operations and endpoint. You can directly invoke each one, uh, the one you like. In AutoBox, all the JAXRS will have documentation created. However, you can use the micro profile Open API annotation to add additional descriptions. So you can describe uh, what the response was this operation like. It will uh, this information will automatically uh, I mean uh, inserted in this response or in this re uh, in this response. So the next one is um, like um, you create your microservice loosely coupled. You can document it. The next thing is uh, okay. Uh, I'm not powerful enough than myself, right? It's a team building. You need to call into the other microservice. And um, uh, so it's uh, basically it's, um, uh, uh, how do you train up from microservice A to microservice B. In Spring, you use a, you use a thing client. And then uh, you can use this annotation and can, uh, enable this uh, uh, thing client and you inject that client. Similarly, very similar actually. Uh, in micro profile, uh, this is the alternative, uh, is the kind of corresponding to this thing client. We use register REST client, and then we inject uh, a REST client into your other CDI bins or JAXS resources, and you directly call the operations on that client. It's very similar, isn't it? So, up to now, do you think it's really similar? Yeah? Uh, again, yeah. So it's um, uh, again. So, so you can. I mentioned earlier. Register client and inject a client. How do I bind the client? I use um, like um, a configuration. I I use this fully qualified class name system client, and then I do a slash mp rest slash url. I can directly bind to the backend here. So this is remember this is um, a config uh, property. I can I can overwrite it um, uh, in the cloud infrastructure. For example, in Kubernetes, maybe backend is different. Is the port or host name is changed, and then I can directly um, overwrite it in config map. So the next thing is like um, you know we we do the rest, and then 
uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you're more interested in about uh, what response you will get back. In what kind of format? So for the format, is a JSON B and JSON P, a very popular format. Uh, no, no, I, I'm saying JSON is a very popular format. When you talk about JSON and in Java EE, you will uh, talk about uh, JSON B and JSON P to help you to serialize and deserialize. So in, in Spring, uh, and uh, normally you use uh, Jackson. However, you can also use a JSON. How many of you use a Jackson in Spring? How many of you use a JSON in Spring? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so so I uh, I was told like uh, this is more popular, <laughs> this is less popular. And in micro profile, we use JSON B can directly like uh, you do a create JSON B and uh, and then you can directly uh, deserialize it into a spring into a string. So this is a give you a kind of uh, demonstrate how to use it like uh, the JSON uh, JSON um, format payload. Basically, in your JXS, uh, this is micro profile. In the JXS resources, you can say I will produce application JSON, have this class, you can just directly define this class. A JSON B can help you to do the serialization, this and deserialization. Okay, so this is about REST. REST is the bounded to the imperative. Like basically, you can like program it using, make it like asynchronous and blocking. However, there's another bigger category is reactive. How many of you are doing reactive at the moment? Okay, so I think this is the beginning of the era of the reactive. Um, if you like uh, go to a lot of conferences, a lot of people started talking about re reactive. And uh, I think uh, I have a strong belief um, from now on, we are going to do the events, we are going to do the reactive. So that's why Kafka is so popular. So in Spring, you can use uh, Spring Reactor has been around for many years. Spring Re uh, you can use a direct API Spring Reactor. And then when you trying to use uh, Kafka for this messaging uh, kind of the publish messaging uh, message and consume message, you can directly use the Kafka API or you use the Spring Boot annotations. Like in this example, you can use uh, like a Kafka listener and this declare a consumer. And this way you, you can uh, inject the Kafka template and then you can send a message. Uh, similarly, in micro profile, you ha we have a micro profile reactive uh, uh, stream operators. Uh, and then you can also use RxJava. And this is a kind of operator on the reactive streams. Uh, and also, is uh, uh, in order to connect, uh, publish, or consume message, and uh, we come up with a neat way how to uh, easily to uh, connect to the messaging broker. So we have a um, reactive messaging. So one thing I want to say: this is reactive messaging, you can plug in Kafka, or you can cl plug in uh, uh, like a MQTT and etc. All these kind of like. Uh, um, messaging broker is uh, can be plugged in to this because this reactive messaging is not directly linked to Kafka per se. So we have two annotations. One is outgoing, basically this is a publisher, and one is incoming, this is kind of consumer. It's really similar as well. Okay, so up to now, like uh, you can write your uh, microservices and write hundreds of them. And how to uh, improve the quality of services? How to like uh, make sure they are configurable, they are resilient, and etc. So the first thing is the configurable configuration. Um, when you deploy, when you design or developing microservices, uh, probably you have heard of twelve factor. Twelve factor. Okay, a few hands up. In 12 factor, if you have not heard of it, I re uh, encourage you to Google for it, 12 factor app. So it's a, in the, uh, the third factor is called uh, um, configuration. Basically, it's externalize your configuration. Basically, in this way, you can write uh, your microservices once, and uh, you can deploy it any, anywhere. So you can free configure it. And uh, when you change the value of the property, you do not need to repackage your application. 
basically the automatically basically you inject the, the value instead of a hard code value in your application. So this is uh, uh, in Spring way, and uh, for example, you have this uh, kind of um, uh, JSON format uh, format like uh, you do a Elastic Search URL user, and then you can do a, like a configure properties with this prefix, and then then you automatically like uh, inject all each like a uh, uh, second layer into this uh, class, and then later on you can inject that configure somewhere. And then you can directly get a URL for it and automatically get this. In micro profile, uh, is um, kind of at the moment is a, f a flat, uh, uh, flat layer. So we are, we are trying to like uh, introduce uh, uh, this this kind of support as well. However, you if you have a JSON file, you can directly write uh, your configure source yourself and eventually can map to this uh, something like this. And uh, in the micro profile, you can do the config provider dot get config. You can get a config. And then if you want to retrieve each uh, property, you can say this is property name and this is type. You directly get this. And this is a programmatic lookup, or you can use the injection. You can directly inject this property name, and uh, then you get the like the 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 value of this um, property. OK, so next thing is uh, fault tolerance. When you like uh, fault tolerance, basically is uh, uh, how to create a resilient microservice. So in Spring, you use um, uh, Hystrix. You can use directly use uh, Hystrix. Or you use uh, like uh, Spring Boot. Um, uh, uh, you use uh, the Spring Boot annotations, like a history a command. And you can specify this is a, like if this operation failed, you can directly call this fallback. And if you want to add the circuit breaker, you can just say enable circuit breaker. In micro profile, we have a few annotations, like a timeout. Like a, this is means that if this operation cannot finish the processing within like two seconds, I will time out. And also the retry, if this operation failed, uh, and uh, I can do the retry, I can specify how many times I want to retry, and uh, how, how long do I need to retry altogether. And also I can specify circuit breaker. And uh, again, this is a, f uh, a last resort um, kind of uh, uh, last resort operation. So it's, if something's not working, and this is uh, uh, my kind of fallback. Basically, this operation, like a fallback inventory, uh, this operation will be called if something is not working. So this uh, is uh, for tolerance. So this is um, uh, like a demonstration how to uh, use this fallback. The next one is uh, about secure microservices. You know, in the monolith macro, uh, monolith application, like uh, you can hide a lot of sensitive uh, operations, right? Do not expose it. Once you are doing microservices, like uh, you break the monolith into like uh, tens, uh, twenties microservices, each one of them has a, a identity. So basically, it's a uh, is uh, some of them could be very sensitive content written very sensitive information. So in this way, you have to secure them. So in Spring, uh, you use uh, enable web security can directly uh, secure it. In macro profile, actually we use a macro profile JWT uh, together with the Java EE security. Like uh, in each like operation, for example, this operation, like uh, this this class. And uh, I just uh, say, actually, any operations on this class, only admin or user can access access it. And uh, so, it's, um, so what uh, what's the underlying implementation? How to make sure, like, uh, when you invoke, um, I mean, a microservice, uh, make sure a user being checked, and also his access right being checked. And then, if his access right. Uh, I hasn't got this kind of rules, and that request will be rejected. Basically, we have 
uh, Microprofile GWT directly uh, uh, like uh, adopt GWT. Do you know GWT? Okay, cool. So uh, what we did is uh, Microprofile GWT just added two claims. One is the UPN, basically um, a uni unique identifier for that um, user. The other one is um, uh, the other one is group, basically what can, which group this user belong to. So it's a, that's a, the, other, the other claim. So uh, it will put uh, the information in the GWT token, and then it, it will put on the HTTP header. So when you invoke on the microservices, you will pass this um, token to downstream. When the downstream receives this token, automatically open it and find out, okay, you are John. And your admin, yeah, okay, you can access me. So this is this is uh, that. It's quite um, uh, straightforward. So this is uh, kind of demonstrate um, the rules allowed, and then uh, and then you can yeah uh, check whether you can access it. So here you can directly inject HTTP headers, and then you can uh, get hold of the um, token from the HTTP headers as well. Okay, so. Uh, now it's like um, uh, we we have uh, like a uh, quality of services. So next thing is that you think uh, I can, uh, I created my cloud native microservices and I uploaded to the uh, deployed them to the cloud, and um, then you will want you will be you might wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh how well my microservices are doing. Is my microservice performing really well, very fast? If my microservice is uh, is not well, can can uh, like a cloud infrastructure treat it? This is like uh, like uh, your parent, and then you always worry about your children, right? This is like uh, the microservice you are developing. I think is uh, sometimes uh, I suddenly wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh, I I I forgot to add this line. And basically, is uh, Think about the code all the time. <laughs> it's like a baby. Uh, so it's, uh, you need to monitor them. And the other thing is you, you really want to make your microservice intelligent. Basically, if it's not ready, you should, uh, the microservice should uh, be able to tell the cloud infrastructure, I'm not ready, do not uh, like, uh, uh, send me any request, and etc. So how do we do it? Luckily, we have this kind of thing health. In Spring, you have uh, the actuator. So basically, you can you you have this uh, endpoint slash health, and then you can like uh, uh, do the implement health indicator to ca uh, put some no uh, I mean logic here for the health. In Micro Profile, uh, we have uh, like uh, two endpoint. Uh, in the auto box, we have a slash uh, health slash ready and a slash health slash live. Uh, how many of you know Kubernetes? Okay, if you know Kubernetes, so it's, you know Kubernetes uh, have two probes, uh, health probes. One is the readiness probe, one is the uh, liveness probe. This is directly, we create uh, this one for the readiness probe and this one for the uh, uh, liveness probe. And then you can put uh, any uh, implementation here. For the readiness, I would like to try um, if I, um, if I uh, need to contact my database, I will just uh, try to co connect uh, my database to see whether I can reach my database. If I cannot, I had better written down because I'm not ready. For liveness, is uh, like uh, this is about uh, uh, RAM. Like uh, maybe you nearly run out of memory. In this case, you had better to tell Kubernetes, I'm not. Uh, uh, I am starving. I I I feel sick. Please destroy me, and etc. <laughs> but for Spring, you only have one endpoint, so you cannot, uh, uh, I mean, do the both the readiness or liveness. Maybe you create another endpoint for the uh, one, uh, one or the other. So the other one is the metrics. In Spring, again, you use the Spring actuator to, like, you can. Uh, 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 passing a counter service and to do the increment uh, decrement. In micro profile, we use um, micro profile metrics. It, come, uh, it creates a few annotations, like a time, the content, 
uh, metered, and etc., to calculate how long the operation uh, needs to respond to a particular request, and etc. So this is a uh, this metric is very powerful. It uh, automatically like uh, um, uh, tell you how many classes have been loaded and what the uh, I mean GC is uh, performing as well. So this is all like uh, um, kind of uh, server side metrics also uh, being added to the slash metrics. So you can feed in the metrics uh, um, like uh, information to uh, Prometheus or Grafana. You can draw up a graph. Really nicely. Oh, the other one is uh, distributed uh, uh, tracing. Uh, so it's um, uh, so basically it's uh, for why do I need this distributed tracing? So basically, imagine you have like hundreds of microservices, A call B, B call C, C call F, right? If something not working, like one operation, and the final is got stuck, you need uh, like if you work on the service. Now it's like we are developers, we do everything, right? We are all in one. We do development, we do testing, we uh, uh, like do support, uh, we do the bug fix. So it's, uh, you know, maybe you get a phone call in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., you find, okay, this is a kind of go stuck. You need uh, somewhere to figure out which bit is not working. So this comes with open tracing. If you have hundreds of microservices, it's difficult for you to uh, like get out of one piece of paper to draw a graph to see, okay, I guess this is kind of the 55th microservice that may not be, um, be working. So you need some tool to help you. So ZipKing or Yaga can help you to produce this kind of graph. However, in order to join all this up, you need to connect, you have a, you need a thread to like uh, connect them all up. This thread is called a correlation ID. So it's a in micro profile in each like all the HTTP requests and et cetera, we automatically pass uh, down the correlation ID to the downstream. In this way, like uh, the tracer uh, implementation like uh, Zipkin or Yaga can draw up a graph for you. You can click each span to see how long it take, or somewhere is not working. So this is a, a macro profile. Basically, the, all the JAX requests um, request automatically trace. If you want to add a, uh, additional trace, you can do add trace. Uh, similarly, Spring, you use the uh, Spring Cloud stats, is already, is also automatically traced. So up to now, you, you kind of sit there and think, uh, do you think they are similar? Yeah? Do you think uh, now you understand the, the kind of micro profile better? Good. Uh, I think my mission accomplished. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, before I uh, go to the, like, um, uh, go to the, the, the final thing, I want to give you a quick demo uh, about micro profile. Okay, so here I have two services. Uh, earlier, I told you like uh, so. This is uh, my this is a kind of starter. So you can create a, a kind of any uh, like a, a Maven project. Like uh, choose your choose the um, uh, like runtime you want. So here I say demo, and I choose the latest MicroProfile 3.0. At the moment, you can see Open Liberty, Highlander, and Songtail, they are all kind of past uh, the MicroProfile 3.0 TCK. And then you can download. And download, if you say download, and then this one, So here you can do the JAX, and you can see so you can see this is the um, as a as a two uh, folders. 
Oh, hang on. This is spring. Uh, this is the... Yeah, you can see the source folder, and then I create for Liberty. You can see the Liberty, uh, like uh, all the config, server XML, and then this is the source source code. And uh, if you want, uh, like uh, to see um, uh, all the capabilities and etc., and uh, you can do. Yeah, you can just uh, click on. All of them, and to see all the capabilities and etc. So I have uh, uh, created the project myself already, uh, save time, and then also I had it running. Uh, the other thing is uh, in Liberty, uh, I'm, uh, I just use the uh, use the latest uh, uh, Liberty plugin. So now let's let's see. Let's go to the yeah. It's really difficult. I can see localhost. So it's a it's a list on the uh, is a, yeah, the index file on the ninety eighty. So this is a demonstrate my just as just as resources. Uh, in my code, in my code here, uh, I can easily so the file is correspond to this is my JXRS application, and uh, this is uh, my JXRS resources. So if I say here, a direct is say just London, I save it. And it will restart itself. And I hello, Jax London. So basically, is uh, when you code uh, is uh, automatically it will reflect to the uh, run, uh, to the application. Basically, rebounds the application, and uh, you can uh, you can see the view the change. Is uh, going to I I have a PR uh, like uh, to be merged. Basically, is uh, will be in the micro profile starter very uh, like in the next few days. So you can try out yourself. Uh, the other thing is, uh, like uh, in this, uh, I want to demonstrate to you, like uh, this is a client server uh, kind of architecture. So in my service A, I directly call into service B. Uh, you can see the like uh, my service B is really slow, right? It takes ages to respond. So actually, if you are doing like a mission critical uh, operation. And also, you you really want to take control yourself. So, uh, in these circumstances, they say actually, I don't have time to wait you for like ages. So you can easily uh, like say, actually, I can only wait for two hundred milliseconds. Actually, I want to make it non-blocking. I can do this. I save it. So now you will not uh, like uh, it should come back to you. Uh, within 200 milliseconds. Let's see. So you don't get anything. Why? It's because it's come back without any res uh, re uh, result, right? You will think, oh, th that's, this is not what I want. So uh, basically, in the uh, fault tolerance that I talked to you, and uh, you have the last result um, uh, kind of uh, operation. So basically, you have contingency plan. Basically, this is a fallback. I can say, OK, uh, if something is not going well, please call my fallback. So this is a fallback I directly call this operation. So you can say, oh, uh, uh, you will expect to see this is my fallback as Jack London. Let's see. Yeah? So this is a kind of automatically demonstrate to you like uh, the fault tolerance aspect. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, the I mentioned earlier. I mentioned uh, I mentioned earlier about uh, the health check. So auto box, uh, you have uh, like uh, the endpoint slash health, which is the aggregate of the uh, levels and readiness uh, prop. And then you can go to the health uh, live. 
So this is very useful because you can feed into the Kubernetes uh, uh, Leibniz probe. You can just say HTTP get health live uh, feed in, and then Kubernetes automatically like poke this one. The other one you can see here is the ready, and then we'll give you a readiness check. So in the code itself, uh, and in here, so I have a, a lemonis, so I can directly do like a, like this one. So with a live and true, so that's data, and then readiness, so I have a re ready true. So you can see uh, from the URL here, it's a ready true, like ready, right? So the other thing is um, auto box is uh, you also get metrics. So if I just say metrics, you get get all the like a CPU. You don't need to do anything. You get uh, this um, is uh, class loading uh, uh, and etc. And the thread, uh, all the thread use, and also the GC uh, and etc. And uh, for any particular like uh, the. Um, uh, for any particular uh, operation metrics, like uh, I can do, I'll show you here. Uh, so any particular operation here, uh, I have at a time on this operation, like a time request. It'll give me uh, how much time it takes to have this response um, posted back to the uh, client. Uh, in this way, like, uh, I call this operation. Now I go to slash uh, uh, metrics, and uh, apart from all the GC and thread and etc., towards the end you will get all these kind of percentile data for that. So this one you can easily plug in Prometheus and to draw you a really nice graph to see the response and etc. So this is uh, one thing. The other thing I want to demonstrate is the uh, configuration. So configuration, like uh, uh, here, uh, in the macro profile, and you can specify uh, as an application developer, like uh, you can, um, there's a config file called macro profile config or property. Uh, you can see the. You can add any uh, any like uh, config property here. And, uh, and then you can inject into the uh, any CDI beans. So in here, if I want to inject into into my bean, uh, in, for example, here I can inject. Uh, I can directly say at inject at a config property, and then a name as a weather, right? I can say string weather and uh, it's weather. Okay, now I go back here. Go back to the here. I can say it's dry, right? So it's very powerful. So basically, in that is the kind of the pre canned value, and then later on you can overwrite it by the environment variable or some other config source, maybe Zookeeper and etc. So let's go back to the. Do you think it's easy? Yeah, straightforward. Cool. Uh, let's go back uh, to the um, uh, like uh, slides again. I have a, a couple of slides. So, okay. So the takeaways. So it's uh, actually is uh, as a developer, you are free to choose which one you like. Uh, I'm not here to like I say uh, stop using Spring and come to use Micro Profile. I want to pass a message. Actually, there's a kind of uh, choices you can make, and uh, one day you you might want to uh, look at the micro profile to see whether you like it. And uh, the other thing is there's uh, kind of so many uh, like uh, runtime 
uh, support micro profile. So it's uh, basically we are all here to help you to do the cloud native uh, uh, microservice development. Uh, and uh, I work on Liberty. We support uh, both the micro profile and the Spring. So uh, Open Liberty. Any of you heard of Open Liberty? Okay, cool. Like uh, last year, is like uh, ask nobody, nobody <laughs> hands up. So it's, uh, if you have not, are you all, are you all um, from my lab yesterday? How many of you didn't do the lab yesterday? Still no micro profile uh, and Liberty. Okay, cool. By the way, I did a lab yesterday about um, a micro profile whole day workshop. I'm going to rerun this workshop on Thursday. If you are interested, come along so you will learn everything about micro profile and Liberty. So Spring is, uh, again, uh, I mean, uh, is, uh, without saying, you all, uh, most of your hands up when I ask Spring. It's very popular. However, micro profile is catching up. It's kind of, it's uh, evolving very fast. Uh, according to the survey, like uh, last year we did a survey, about 13% people like uh, use a micro profile for production is a few months, I think nine months later, it like jumped to 33. So it's really, uh, I mean, it's evolving very fast. And um, I want to say both Spring and Micro Profile help you to do the cloud native uh, microservices development. And there's some, a lot, they share a lot of similarity and uh, they have some dependence, uh, differences uh, as well. And um, Let's have a look uh, at the differences. So it's a uh, Spring uh, is uh, open source, right? And you can uh, contribute. And uh, however, it's driven by Pivotal, and it's a kind of uh, it's a one vendor. Vendor, micro profile is open source, open community. We all like uh, it's not controlled by a uh, like a company per se is uh, we discuss like uh, when we make a decision everybody like uh, uh, voice their opinions uh, eventually we settle on the majority and uh, Spring uh, it has a lot of APIs for you to use right and micro profile we try to make sure like uh, you can concentrate on your business logic we have less uh, less code for you to like uh, 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 play around uh, to be able to do quality service because we strongly believe uh, you should uh, spend more time on your writing your business logic uh, in standards or uh, play with uh, all these kind of APIs. We do most of the work for you. And uh, also is the kind of, we have a lot uh, like um, competitions among these um, uh, runtimes because we all support a micro profile What's the differentiation? Basically, we are trying to, uh, I mean, make sure, like, uh, like for us, Open Liberty, make sure is that we provide the best uh, developer experience so that you can choose us. So uh, again, like, uh, competition make uh, like uh, the world uh, more beautiful because uh, it's like uh, we are all trying to target developers, make sure we do everything and take all the nasty bits so that you can enjoy the, your uh, daily work. And etc. Uh, and um, so the spring is a kind of you can is is if you know what you are doing, you can do a lot of things, right? Is a fan mix a match. But if you don't know what you are doing, you can get lost very quickly, right? And um, so in micro profile, this runtime hide all the complexity for you. So it's a kind of runtime provide what needed according to the specification. Specifications are quite. Uh, quite lightweight. So basically, we strongly believe you don't need to spend uh, like uh, hours to read the spec. Hopefully, we only think uh, uh, half an hour is enough for you to get to know the, each micro profile specifications. And in Spring, you, you normally create a fat GR, you package all your libraries in your, with your application. Each time, is if you change one line code, you carry this fat GR and put it to the Docker image and push to the Kubernetes. Uh, in micro profile, we use a different approach. We use a thin, thin wall. So basically, it's an application container, they have a, a layer, Docker layer. That's unchanged. All the micro profile implementation is in that layer. It doesn't change. So 
if you change the one line code, you just push a few k, uh, uh, like uh, um, to the Docker, and uh, then uh, very easily to be updated in Kubernetes. With that, this is kind of uh, what I said today is uh, directly from the um, uh, IBM experiment, uh, like uh, converting from an uh, uh, application called Blue Computing, written in Spring Boot, and then is we asked what's the difference between Spring and Micro Profile. So a team uh, did an experiment converting that micro, few microservices uh, in that application to uh, like a Micro Profile uh, microservices. And uh, they, they wrote a blog, so it's uh, basically all my slides and et cetera is, uh, is uh, directly influenced by these blogs. So you can read in more detail. Uh, also, uh, in September, I wrote a blog about uh, this comparison as well. Uh, check it out, uh, this micro profile, and check out um, Open Liberty. If you want to uh, uh, know any micro profile uh, specification, check out uh, these guides. And these guides also tell you, like, uh, Kubernetes, uh, Istio, how, how, to, uh, how can they work uh, together with micro profile as well. Uh, with that, I think um, I'm dead on time. Right. Well, I, ha I have a time maybe for one one question. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, how does work with persistence? How do you oh, you mean the uh, the database persistent? So good question. In micro profile, actually, we talked about uh, this uh, uh, persistence and uh, database access. Uh, uh, yeah, last year and also this year. We are trying to settle on the best um, uh, practice about uh, database um, access. Uh, eventually, we haven't uh, settled on the best practices, and uh, we rely on the Java GPA, so Java EE GPA. So at the moment, I use the GPA. And then what is based on the Jakarta EE, there's a JNoSQL uh, stack as well to access the NoSQL database. Yeah, good question. Any 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 more question? Maybe one more. Yeah. What's the tooling support for uh, microprofile? Yeah, very good. And uh, you know, is uh, we have the um, uh, microprofile starter, and then then is um, we exposed the endpoint. Uh, we have done one VS Code extension, uh, like uh, for generating microprofile. The, someone is working on the IntelliJ uh, uh, extension, and then, and then we are asking for help for Eclipse Chira <laughs> extension. If anyone have free cycle, please, um, uh, yeah, get in touch. By the way, if you want to work on Macro Profile, know more about Macro Profile. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want. Uh, Emily uh, F H uh, J I A N G. Um, yeah, very, very good. Thank you for coming, and I hope to see you in some other occasions. So, or I really want you to get involved in Micro Profile. Thank you.